driving force right now is cutting the carbon emissions. We need to risk minimize, we need to take the energy efficiency as a really serious uh, challenge and solve it together. Heating is one of the largest energy expenses for our cities. So Stanislav, should we be worried that we one day might not have hot water in our taps? No, we shouldn't be worried. But we should be worried about the carbon emissions and the cost of heating that water. So Anna, how does district heating play into this? Well, district heating, that's a, a system where we actually can reduce heat, excess heat, for example. We can have a very wide variety of energy sources, renewables, for example, uh, geothermal, solar thermal, and so forth. So district heating, then we have a grid in the ground, and uh, we can harvest energy, distribute energy, and then make comfort in our homes and apartments. Mm, wonderful. So Anna, what requirements are there in a city for district heating to work? Well, uh, we need the grids, of course. That's one requirement. And also we need to take the, I would say, district heating is an enabler for the green transition. Actually, a third of the energy in EU goes to space heating and uh, heating of our tap water and actually 75% of that is depending on fossil fuels. So we want to get rid of the dependency of importing gas and we want to have a nice energy price and we want to um, have energy that is resilient. Mm. In some countries, for instance Sweden, district heating is the biggest source of heating. So what would happen if we implemented this all over Europe? Yes, I mean, we have good practices in Helsingborg, for example, this heating since 1974. So we have been working with this for many years. And uh, in Europe, we're seeing large investments right now uh, because we have very low amount of district uh, heating. In UK, only 2%, in France, 6%, and in, in Germany, about 10%. So we are seeing large investments uh, and we need to risk minimize. We need to find new collaborations. We need to find new partnerships to get those grids down in the ground so we can start to work with triple the renewables and really work with the energy efficiency to keep the 1.5 target alive. Mm. Thank you and I really liked you saying that. So Stanislav, what, what energy sources can we use for district heating? Yes, Anna touched a little bit upon it. We can use all of the energy sources. We can group them to the fossil fuels that we are using mostly right now but we have also the renewables, also including the geothermal power, and we can use the, those waste ones, like the excess heat, for example, from industry. Alfa Laval has worked with district heating for many decades, so what is the role of the heat exchanger here? Well, actually, heat exchange is in the heart of district heating. You will find it when we harvest energy, you will find it in the distribution system, and you will find it in the apartment, giving comfort to apartments. So Stanislav, what is the driving force here in the, the energy sector when it comes to this transition? Driving force right now is cutting the carbon emissions. This is the biggest one. And the second one is, of course, trying to get out of the mix of the fossil fuels. So that will be also the driving force for the next five to ten years. And there is a lot of talk about fourth generation district heating. What is that? Well, every system evolves, and this is the same in the district heating. So the fourth generation systems are the one in which we are trying to lower the temperature. So in the systems that we have right now in many countries, this is 120, 30 degrees. Right now we want to go down to 60 to enable much cheaper operation and maintenance and also installation of those systems. And the final question goes to you, Anna, here. Uh, if you were in charge of the development of Europe's district heating, what would be the first thing you would do? Well, we need to get the grids down in the ground. And for that, we need incentives. So there is an interesting case to invest in these grids. Uh, we are seeing a lot of legislation coming now. I think we need both sticks and carrots. And then we need to really work on triple the renewables and take the energy efficiency as a really serious uh, challenge and solve it together. Foster partnership and collaboration to create new business models. I think that is uh, crucial. Well, thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much, Stanislav. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.